So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back. And we back with some new discoveries from archaeologists and scientists of the world, right? This video here is what scientists found inside this place shocked the world. So we're going to check it out. If you knew, you know what to do. That subscribe button. Here we go. There are a lot of things hidden underground. Although archaeologists are actively excavating them one by one, some of the secrets beneath the ground remain undiscovered. In this video, we'll unravel some of the most mysterious finds. From a precious hoard to warriors buried alive, here are the 15 most amazing things found buried underground. Mm. Number 15. Hoxon Hoard Eric Laws was a man who was out on a mission. The man lost his hammer, and he was determined to get it back. Hammer. On November 16, 1992, Laws set off for a field in Hoxon Village near Suffolk. With a metal detector he received as a retirement gift, Laws explored the field and tried to find the tool he lost. When the metal detector picked up a strong signal, Laws thought he had found a big chunk of metal. He began digging, and it quickly became apparent that he stumbled upon something incredibly valuable. After a few shovelfuls of dirt mixed with gold and silver coins, Laws realized there was more to discover oh. on the farmland. Shortly after he began digging, he stopped and contacted the authorities. The local authorities sought the help of the... I know y'all saying the same thing as me. I wouldn't have stopped. <laughs> By the time they got here, man, I'd have been at the center of the earth trying to get, get as much as I could find down there. Local archaeological society and asked experts to look at the site. The next day, archaeologists excavated the area of the farmland as discreetly as they could. The entire hoard was then transported to a safe place where each piece of the treasure could be examined under laboratory conditions. The hoard contained 60 pounds of gold and silver objects, including 15,234 Roman coins, dozens of silver spoons, and 200 gold objects. Fortunately for Laws, the British government awarded him a staggering 1.75 million pounds for his incredible find. They also commended him for leaving the treasure intact. I don't know how much that equal right now offhand. I have to look it up in American dollars, but it sounds like a lot, bro. <laughs> I would be happy. Meanwhile, archaeologists who worked on the excavation received a generous reward. After all, the project they worked on became renowned as the biggest and most recent hoard found in Britain. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. 15th Century Gold Book When gold. Buffy Bailey and her husband Ian used their metal detector to look for treasure on farmland near York, England, she didn't expect to find much. When she heard the familiar beep of the detector, she expected to discover something insignificant, like a sheep's ear tag or a tab from a drink can. But instead, they discovered a small object made of gold. It weighed less than an ounce and measured about half an inch long. The artifact was shaped like a book and most likely dated back to the 15th century. It was made of either 22 or 24 karat gold, mm. making it one of the most precious artifacts discovered in the past few years. In the book's open pages are depictions of several saints, including Saint Leonard and Margaret. Archaeologists and historians believe that the book was the property of a relative of the English king Richard III. It might have been owned by his wife, Anne Neville, who kept the artifact with her during pregnancy and childbirth. After examining the artifact, experts believe that it's worth about $130,000, or perhaps even more, but its significance lies beyond... I would say more. Somebody came at me for this a hundred and something thousand i'd be like all right cool i'm gonna hold on to it i know the offers will get better no ain't no way i'm 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 taking that for that no it shouldn't be nothing less than a mill <laughs> for thirty thousand dollars or perhaps even more but its significance lies beyond its face value according to historians the book dates back to when sumptuary laws forbade anyone other than the nobility to carry gold number 13. Yeah, that's the library of ashurbanipal if there's a place that historians lament to this day, it's none other than the Great Library of Alexandria. This ancient establishment held thousands of manuscripts that could have revealed the secrets of the ancient world. Unfortunately, it was destroyed. However, did you Why? know that there's another significant library that dates back to about 2,600 years ago? This is the Royal Library of Ashurbanipal, also known as the first library in the world, or the oldest surviving royal library in the world. The Royal Library of Ashurbanipal was discovered by archaeologists excavating at the site of Nineveh, which is now a part of modern-day Iraq. 
This library contains over 30,000 clay tablets and fragments written in cuneiform script. It covers a wide range of subjects from government records to literature. Ashurbanipal is often regarded as the last great ruler of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, who reigned from 668 to 627 BC. No wonder the library named after him was fit for a king. Most of Nineveh was burned by fire around 612 BC. All of the books made with paper were destroyed by fire, but the clay tablets weren't as fragile. Instead of burning, the clay tablets remained sturdy despite the flame. In fact, the fire led to the tablets being reinforced and baked harder. To this day, these clay tablets remain to be among the best preserved records over thousands of years of Mesopotamian history. Before the library's discovery, everything we knew about ancient Assyria came from the Bible or anecdotal accounts. However, the discovery of the ancient tablets changed what we knew about this culture. Today, most of the things we know about the Mesopotamian culture came from these tablets. Mm. Number 12. Frankenstein Mummies There are a lot of rituals that our ancestors did in the past that we still don't understand. When archaeologists discovered the remains of six people in a 3,000-year-old Scottish bog, they didn't expect several of the bodies to be made of different body parts from different individuals. These so-called Frankenstein mummies were discovered more than a decade ago in a prehistoric village on South Uist's Island off Scotland's coast. What they initially thought was a female skeleton turned out to be a macabre combination of remains. The woman's jawbone, skull, arm and leg didn't fit with the rest of her body. What's more, each body part came from a different person. None of the remains discovered in the bog were from the same family. Now, well, now that would bother me because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, what does this mean? Why would they do that? It has to have some type of significance. You, you just don't randomly do that to somebody. Like, why would they bury somebody like this? And you know, death was very, very important to them back then. So it could have had some type of spiritual meaning it could have been non-spiritual it could have been evil it could have been a uh, curse it could have been so many <laughs> you know what i mean a wide array of things so i'd be cautious of, of that type of stuff there and extremely came from a different person none of the remains discovered in the bog were from the same family what's more astonishing was that some of the remains belonged to people much older than the others for instance one of the male skeletons predates the others by at least an entire century Yet he wasn't buried until hundreds of years had passed. Experts believe that this was a what ritual done by like? the early settlers See? in Scotland. Historians believe that it was a way for them to connect their families from one generation to another. Mm. It's a noble ritual, but you can't blame the archaeologists for freaking out. Number 11. See, that's what I was saying. It had to have some type of significance to it to do it like that. That was just odd for, for some strange reason. I, this just don't sit well. Kids with disabilities buried like royalty. 34,000 years ago, our predecessors lived as hunters and gatherers. Life was tough, and each second was crucial to survival. And yet, they valued the deceased just as much as we do today. Archaeologists were baffled to discover two young boys buried on the outskirts of Vladimir in Russia. The two boys, who were estimated to be 10 and 12 years old, were buried head to head in a long grave. Their remains were both covered in riches. Not less than 10,000 mammoth ivory beads, 20 armbands, 16 ivory mammoth spears, deer antlers, calf bones, and 300 fox teeth were found inside their coffin. It was a treasure trove as much as it was a burial. For people who lived 34,000 years ago, these artifacts were incredibly precious. And so to leave it behind and bury it along with the deceased signifies how much they valued their family members. Archaeologists believe that it was the norm back then but a second discovery suggested otherwise. Near the grave of the two young boys were the remains of a man about 40 years old when he perished. Unlike the grave of the two children, the old man's grave had far fewer treasures, with only 3,000 mammoth beads, several fox teeth, and a stone pendant. What's more, the two young boys looked like they were born with disabilities. It goes to show that our predecessors didn't discriminate against people who were born differently. This well, isn't the only burial where the disabled were treated like royalty. There are other burial sites belonging to people with disabilities that were far more extravagant than ordinary people. This was a common practice during the mid-Upper Paleolithic period. Number 10. Medieval Maternity In a medieval grave near Bologna, Italy was a curious burial. 
The remains belonged to an injured pregnant woman who lived between the 7th and 8th centuries AD. Her grave was discovered and excavated in 2010, and researchers were baffled by what they saw. The woman had obvious head trauma, but what made her grave tragic was the tiny skeleton between her legs, the fetus. Coffin birth, also known as post-mortem fetal extrusion, is a debatable phenomenon. Simply put, it's a phenomenon where a deceased woman carrying a child expels her baby after death. In most cases, a fetus would be expelled, but some anecdotal records claim that there are accounts of coffin births where the child was alive. According to archaeologists, the woman was about 38 weeks pregnant when she died. The baby's head was already positioned below the woman's pelvic cavity when she perished, which meant she was close to giving birth. Theoretically, the cervix of a woman shouldn't relax after death, which means the baby should still remain inside. However, experts theorize that gas buildup might cause the dead fetus to be expelled out of wow. their deceased mother's body. Number 9. That's Lucy. Sad. AL288-1, also known as Lucy, is a collection of hundreds of fossilized bones that make up 40% of a female Australopithecus afarensis, one of our ancestors who lived more than 3 million years ago. Lucy was a distant relative of modern man. By distant, I mean many steps away from us in the evolution ladder. Unlike our most recent predecessors, Lucy looked more like an ape than a modern human. She had long, dangling arms, but she had a pelvic bone, a spine, feet, and legs that almost resembles ours. When her bones were discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia, the entire world was baffled. After all, her discovery enabled us to learn more about our earlier ancestor species, making it possible to trace how we evolved. Number Here 8. We go with that theory. Notre Dame's Tombs In December 2022, archaeologists announced that they discovered two lead sarcophagi buried beneath the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral. After careful analysis of the first sarcophagus, archaeologists found out that it contained the remains of a high priest who died in 1710. The cause of death was quite surprising. According to experts, the priests died after living what they claimed to be a sedentary life. The occupant of the second sarcophagus, however, might forever remain unidentified. Based on his burial place, he might have been a young wealthy noble who lived with a high status in the 14th century. Future excavations beneath the cathedral might yield more historical discoveries. Number seven. I was about to say, I was wondering if they were going to just, they might as well just tear that whole place down and just start digging until they can't dig no more. If you find one, there's going to be multiple around it, I would think. 9,000 year old beer. Do you have the guts to try out alcohol that has been no. partially buried underground for the last 9,000 years? Reason Not if you cherish your stomach. <laughs> no, you want to be up for the next month straight. No. Archaeologists in southeastern China discovered beer residue in vessels and old dregs. Uh -huh. It was estimated that the artifacts date back to the Neolithic era. Near the alcohol were two skeletons, suggesting that their relatives visited their graves and left alcohol to honor them. After analyzing the residue, experts concluded that the alcoholic beverage was made of fermented rice, specifically a grain called Job's Tears. Unlike the alcohol that we drink today, this ancient beer was cloudy in color and tasted slightly sweet. Archaeologists expected to discover more of the ancient alcohol as they can... She obviously never had food poisoning in her life, a day in her life, bro. You don't want those type of problems. You wouldn't even think about tasting or drinking that. ...continue to excavate the site. After all, it seemed like a normal part of their rituals. No. What's strange, however, is how people made the mold they used to ferment the beer 9,000 years ago. Scientists are still unsure whether the people in the settlement accidentally noticed that rice they left behind became moldy and tasted sweeter, or if they obtained knowledge of how to create alcohol elsewhere. Number 6. Yeah, smell bad. 2,000 year old <laughs> butter. Since we're already on ancient food, let me tell you about this incredible discovery. Recently, archaeologists discovered a massive chunk of butter, estimated butter. to be about 2,000 years old. It's not the oldest chunk of butter we found. In 2013, 5,000-year-old butter was found buried in a bog. Even so, it was still an incredible discovery. The lump of butter was accidentally discovered by a turf cutter cutting peat for fuel. Needless to say, the man was not only surprised by what he found, but also by what he smelled. It turned out that ancient butter smells incredibly rancid. According to imagine. historians, people treated bogs just like an oversized natural freezer. It had the right temperature, acidity, and oxygen levels to keep food safe. 
I guess this also applies to human bodies. The 2,000-year-old bog butter was theoretically still edible. However, none of the researchers were brave enough to consume it. No, I mean, I would be against trying it no, out as well. Thank you. Number 5. The Prediction of Dorothy Eady Do you believe in reincarnation? Regardless of your answer, you'll most likely be fascinated by the story of Dorothy Eady. In January 1904, Dorothy was born to a happy family. She was a bright-eyed child who was naturally curious about everything and anything around her. However, her life was short, or at least that's what her parents initially believed. Dorothy was pronounced dead after falling from a long and winding staircase, but it wasn't the case. Hours after she collapsed and allegedly took her final breath, she was found upright and restless on her bed. After the accident, Dorothy's attitude and behavior changed. When the family went to the British Museum in 1908, Wait, what? What? Wait a minute now. What just happened here? I, I, I'm, uh, hold on. I'll back that up a little bit. Case. But it wasn't the case. Hours after she collapsed and allegedly took her final breath, she was found upright and restless on her bed. After the accident, Dorothy's attitude and behavior changed. When the family went to the British Museum in 1908, her parents noticed that Dorothy paid particular attention to Egyptian artifacts. Dorothy also sat near one of the preserved mummies and begged her parents to let her stay there as she wanted to be with her people. She even knelt to kiss the feet of one of the statues, which unsurprisingly caused several heads to turn. After they visited the museum, Dorothy had a dream. She was in an unknown garden she had never seen before, and yet it felt so familiar. When Dorothy saw a photo of Egypt and a photo of the Temple of Seti I, she insisted that it was where she belonged. Her dreams allegedly became more vivid. It made her conclude that she lived in ancient Egypt in the past and she was a reincarnation of an Egyptian priestess. Instead of dismissing her dreams, she went to Cairo, Egypt, where she married an Egyptian man. Unsurprisingly, people from all around the world doubted her stories. I mean, reincarnation? Really? But Dorothy wasn't phased. Despite the wide disdain and skepticism, she proclaimed a vision she saw in her dreams. She claimed she remembered a palace garden within the temple of Seti I. She pointed to a patch of land, and surprisingly, when the site was excavated, the remains of a magnificent garden really was in the unexplored spot. This is just one of the many predictions she had about ancient Egypt. She also allegedly described things in ancient Egypt that were never known before. American archaeologists respected Dorothy, or Ram Seti, her new name after moving to Egypt. And now, it's time for today's topic. What scientists found in this place shocked the whole world. Seeing dead people is normal for archaeologists and scientists alike. After all, these guys deal with corpses and remains almost daily. They're in charge of examining dead bodies so we can learn more about our past. Even so, there are still some discoveries that baffle them. Most people are baffled when they see the remains inside the Capuchin Crypt for the first time. The capuchin mummies are nothing new, but people mm, worldwide were baffled when they saw this photo. Who wouldn't freak out upon seeing several mummies lying on the ground? I know I would. The capuchin crypt is a small space beneath a church in Rome, Italy. Visitors from all around the world travel to Rome just to get a glimpse of this macabre attraction. This subterranean crypt holds 3,700 bodies of capuchin friars buried by the order. In 1631, the friars arrived at the church, bringing 300 cartloads of previously deceased friars along with them. Ever since then, the remains of those in the order were kept in the capuchin crypt. Some of the older skeletons were taken apart and made into ornaments. Needless to say, this attraction definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Do you think you have the guts to see and visit the crypt? As always, comment down below with the ornaments? hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. Ornaments? With that said, Let's keep things moving. Number 4. The Dead Sea Scrolls Sometime between 1946 and 1947, several teenagers taking care of goats and sheep near the ancient settlement of Qumran on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea stumbled upon a strange cave they had never explored before. One of the young shepherds decided to toss a rock into the side of a cliff when they unexpectedly heard the sound of something shatter. Confused, the young shepherds explored the area and there they discovered large clay jars, leather, and scrolls. It wasn't until later that archaeologists began inspecting the area and discovered thousands of scroll fragments. 
Altogether, the fragments made up between 800 to 900 manuscripts. Wow. Unfortunately, some of the Dead Sea Scrolls were illegally sold before the archaeologists could secure everything. And so, some parchments reached the United States unknowingly. The Dead Sea Scrolls contain stories and passages from the Bible. There isn't much mystery surrounding the contents, but the origin of the manuscripts remains shrouded in secrecy. To this day, we're still unsure of the identity of the scroll's author. If there's one thing that makes the scrolls intriguing, it's a single manuscript known as the Copper Scroll. Instead of passages and stories from the Bible, it contains an ancient treasure map that lists dozens of gold and silver caches. It's written That's in Hebrew and find. Greek script, with the symbols chiseled onto <laughs> metal sheets. According to the Copper Scroll, there are 64 underground hiding places around Israel that contain precious treasures hidden away from the rest of the world. Decades have passed since the scrolls were recovered, but to this day, none of the treasure hoards were ever recovered. Number 3. Four-Year-Old Unearths Precious Pendant Sometimes unexpected things happen at the most unexpected times. When a young treasure hunter named James Hyatt asked his father to allow him to borrow the metal detector, he didn't expect to hear the familiar sound of the tool, indicating that he had found something beneath the ground. And yet, the moment he held the metal detector and moved around, the boy, along with his father, heard the loud buzz coming from the metal detector. They began digging several inches into the ground. The father and son duo didn't expect much. After all, they were casually using the metal detector. But instead of trash, they discovered a locket mostly made of gold. The image of the Virgin Mary was in great and in, it, in that moment, their life completely changed. Saved on the locket. It was estimated that the gold pendant dates back to the 16th century. Its wow. age and contents easily give it a staggering price tag of around $2 million. As per the law on the continent, $2 million on a random casual outing with your kid and you just treasure hunting. $2 million. If the pendant were to be sold, the money wow. would be split between the person who found it and the property owner. Surely, the young child will never forget his magnificent discoveries. <laughs> Number two, <I> would <laughs> the London Hammer. This hammer encased in rock doesn't look like the most intriguing artifact ever discovered, but it is a mysterious archaeological find that baffles researchers today. Max and Emma Hahn discovered the London Hammer during a summer day in 1936 while the couple was hiking along Red Creek near the community of London, Texas. They noticed the unique piece of wood protruding from a boulder. Their curiosity compelled them to pull it out, and that's when they noticed that an iron hammer with a wooden handle had been inside the rock all along. Now I'm starting to realize why more and more people hike. I see what people are doing now. You know what I mean? I just thought it was just nature. Well, she wanted to be one with nature. No, you out there exploring, you got your metal detector with you, you trying to find stuff. I'm, I'm hip to it now. It was then that a gentleman named Carl Bow caught wind of the curious find. He purchased the artifact from the couple and began examining it. The hammer was six inches long with a diameter of one inch. The metal is composed mainly of iron with bits of chlorine and sulfur. With its contents, it was expected that the hammer would be covered with rust after decades exposed to the elements. But surprisingly, it, it wasn't. wasn't. This led many to claim uh -huh. that the hammer was evidence of a unique blend of metallurgy developed millions of years ago. A report from 1985 announced that the hammer inside the rock was between 400 to 500 million years old. But several experts weren't quite convinced. The debate about the hammer's origin began when it was discovered. Although several experts claim that the hammer was made millions of years ago, it doesn't make sense if you consider the knowledge we know of man's history. After all, man was supposed to exist for a few hundred million years from the period claimed by the experts. The rock where the hammer was found was undoubtedly from millions of years ago, but whether the hammer was inside the rock from the very beginning was debatable. The only way to truly determine the age of the hammer was through carbon-14 dating of the wooden handle. But unfortunately, Bao, the owner of the hammer, has yet to authorize the procedure. Number one, hmm. warriors hmm. buried alive. Hey, like y'all want this information, gotta pay, <laughs> gotta pay. In January 2022, researchers announced that they discovered something intriguing in China. In a complex at an archaeological site within the city of Anyang in Henan Province, China, are the 3,000-year-old tombs of a wealthy clan. The complex of 24 tombs was discovered less than two miles away from the UNESCO World Heritage Archaeological Site of Yinshu. The complex dates back to between 1600 BC to 1046 BC during the Shang Dynasty. 
one of the earliest ever recorded in the country. Among the complex were several pits with war chariots, skeletal remains of horses, gold and bronze artifacts, and more. Archaeologists also discovered the remains of warriors and war horses, but after analyzing the remains, experts discovered something unnerving. The tomb belonged to a prominent clan during the period, and their status was enough for them to bury their servants and horsemen alive. Human sacrifice is a normal part of many cultures in the world, but that doesn't make it less terrifying to discover real examples of it in the past. Scholars believe that the ritual suicide of servants and horsemen was common during the Shang Dynasty. This discovery shows how influential and powerful chariot owners were in ancient China. Most of us can't imagine being buried alive, but if you were born as a commoner serving a high master in the past, you had no choice but to accept this cruel fate. What do you think of these cool discoveries? Which one intrigued you the most? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments down below. The one with the little boy, him and his pops out exploring, treasure hunting, and come across a $2 million fine. <laughs> like, can I just have a little bit of that luck? Just a little bit, you know what I mean? Man, I wish I could have been there when they said to that family how much that was worth and they were going to get for it. I know they lost their mind. Like, I was that kid, I walk around the house like, I own it now. I'm the parent. You know what I mean? <laughs> I found it. You feel me? Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this video. And I know why y'all be out hiking now. All right? And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.